gaming professionals are speaking out on behalf of the customers. Do I have your attention? In my last video, I talked about Tim Willits from Saber Interactive. I talked about Sean Layden from the former CEO of Sony. And I also talked about a uh, name Katsura Hashino, who formerly worked on the Persona and is now working on Metaphor Refantasio and how they're speaking out about the practices in the AAA gaming industry and what's killing it. And some comments said that I was absolutely ridiculous to think that people speaking out on it is gonna change anything. But I mentioned in that video that there was a pattern. The pattern yet repeats again today. The Larian Studio Director, the publishing director for Larian Studios, Michael Douse, 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 Douses, Douses, Douses. I can't say his name. Michael D, we're gonna go with Michael D came out and decided to throw some haymakers at Ubisoft. So let's get into it. So over here on Twitter X, Twitter, Twitter, it's always Twitter. All right, the first statement here, the last notable game on their platform was arguably Far Cry 6 in 2021. The crew, Mirage and Avatar came in 2023 and didn't perform. So you can assume subscriptions were at a lull when Prince of Persia released by 2024, which means people wouldn't be launching their store all too much here's what's interesting about this statement and it's the follow-up tweet if the statement gamers should get used to not owning their games is true because of a specific release strategy him talking about the subscription model uh, then the statement developers must get used to not having jobs if they make a critically acclaimed game i love this statement because there are so many layers here Developers must get used to not having jobs if they make a critically acclaimed game. Basically, if you're providing a service that gamers don't want, you shouldn't expect everybody to run out and play it and it to pay your bills. You see, for a long time, gamers have been wanting to know, why the heck can I just have the game? Why are there updates? Why does it rely on online connectivity? Now, there are some games that absolutely do rely on this, and those are more of the games where like hell divers hell divers would rely on that but single player title games there's no reason they should rely on online connectivity and there's no reason that i shouldn't be able to download any sort of single player game to an external hard drive nowadays and be able to have that game forever and in many cases there's no reason i shouldn't be able to buy the disc and put it in my game box that i have whatever game box that i decide to have or even my computer which no longer comes with disc drives that's just dumb but I should be able to purchase these things. And I absolutely think that Michael has a strong point here. If the gaming industry is going to go so far out of their way to avoid what their customers want, which is having a game, being able to keep that game and being able to play that game for long periods of time, then the gaming industry should fail. The developers who are not accommodating that need and that want should fail. For instance, if I go out and I buy DVDs, it's because I want to have them for a longer period of time than Amazon will let me keep them even after I purchase them from Amazon. So notably, my wife and I have both had movies removed from our Amazon because we purchased them, some for our kids, and a year later we go back and we don't have them because Amazon decided, oh, you don't need them. However, that being said, I have an Xbox from 20 years ago and I still play Need for Speed when our internet goes down. And guess what? Need for Speed Underground is still as fun today. In fact, our internet went down a few weeks ago and my kids looked at me and said, but dad, the internet's out. I said, yeah, you don't need internet for this game, kids. It's really interesting to see how so many different developers are coming out now talking about the issues that the gaming industry is having. And the issues seem to be they're not giving gamers what they want. Who to thunk it, ladies and gentlemen? You're not giving gamers what they want. You're not giving gamers the ability to download a game and have that game and play that game offline forever like we used to do, or at least until the disc degrades. No, I'm not saying that games last forever. And a lot of people are going to come down and be like, you're not buying the game, you're buying a license. No, you're buying the game. However, it is stipulated you do not have the right to reproduce that game and sell it for the market price, thusly devaluing that game in the market. So anybody who wants to make the licensing argument here, just shut up and go away. Your argument is debunked, no. When I buy a game, I can go get any game that I have for my Xbox, my PlayStation 2, 
my Xbox 360. I can get all of those games right now, bring them down here, and guess what? I can plop them in to the system and play them today. And like I said, some of them are 20 years old. This goes out to the industry. What's so interesting here is that I'm seeing more and more industry professionals talk about this, and this is what makes me so happy. Like I said, I just did a video. I'll put it up here. I'll even put the thumbnail over here where we had three different gaming professionals calling out the problems in gaming and talking about the issues with AAA gaming and just the gaming industry as a whole. Between various different investment, you know, the investment firms and stuff like that, wanting a return, the money pinchers, not letting people get creative with what they're doing. And honestly, gaming companies wanting to overscope their games to a point that they just lose sight of what a good game is. However, for the games that are out there currently in 2024 that actually do play well, they are just fun experiences. They're doing incredibly well. I've listed this so many times, but I'll give the list again. We've got Power World. We've got Hell Divers. Black Myth Wukong came out. We've got Space Marines 2. Now we've got Astro Bot. And now I'm hearing that Metaphor Refantasio is absolutely fantastic. All of these games are providing an experience to the player that the player wants to have. The players don't want to subscribe to a game or subscribe to your service for a game. They want to give you money so that way they can have that game. They can play it once and then five years down the road, they go, man, I had a great time with that game. They pick it back up and they play it again. Or like me with a lot of the games that I had from when I was a kid, I've had to, I've sold them and bought them and sold them and bought them many times. But the funny thing is, is like Need for Speed Underground, I get to tell my kids, yeah, now you get to play a real game. And then I sit there and I play with my children. You see, this is something that the gaming executives should really think about. Where is generational gaming going? How can we make gamers from yesteryear connect with gamers from current year? And honestly, what that is, is making games that we can still access and play with our kids. For instance, one of the games that I connected with, with my oldest was, believe it or not, Call of Duty 2019. Now, I didn't play Call of Duty when I was younger because I was a Halo guy, Halo 2, Halo 3. Comment in the chat if you guys are with me. But it had couch co-op, and I was able to play with my daughter, with my friends, and we were able to go through and play some awesome matches. My daughter got so excited the first time that she reached 20 kills in Call of Duty, and that is a, an experience as a father that just makes me smile. Because I remember back in the day playing Halo 2 when I got first my first 20 kills in a match with my friends online. Again, it's something that I feel that the gaming industry needs to call out, and they are calling this out. And to be perfectly honest, Michael Douse here from Larian has it right. If you think that it's okay that gamers don't own their games, and your subscription service is the way to go, then it should also be true that more people should lose their jobs because of your bad business practices. It's not up for debate. You either, off, you either offer the customer what they want or you don't have a business anymore. You don't have jobs anymore. And a lot of people will sit there and say, oh, but we don't want anybody to lose their jobs. I kind of have a different opinion of the matter. I think that people that provide a fantastic service should never lose their jobs. Sadly, a lot of people who are top tier in the AAA gaming industry have lost their jobs over many years so they could replace them with people who were less talented but also took less money. This is a problem. If you want to pay for top tier talent and keep that top tier talent in your companies, you absolutely should. And this is something that we really need to focus on in the gaming world. We wonder why gaming over the last few years has really lost a lot of the character, a lot of its development, and a lot of its story. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's DEI, it's ESG, it's all this other stuff. And it's also the lack of talent. There are many problems to talk about in gaming right now. And honestly, I think we're seeing a turning of the page. Now, some people might say that I'm too optimistic, but you know what? Maybe that's just my folly. Maybe that's my problem as a person. I just believe in human beings, and I believe that when a problem happens, human beings will show up, and not only will we show up, we'll correct it. Now, again, maybe that's my fault. Maybe I'm too optimistic, and I could be too optimistic, but I just can't see myself giving in to the fact that gaming is over, the best days are behind us, and so on.
I don't believe that because if I believe that the best days of gaming are behind us, then I believe that my children aren't going to have an experience like Halo 2. They're not going to have an experience of the first Assassin's Creed game like I have. They're not going to have the experience of the first Fable game. And that's not something that I want. I want more game developers to call out the problems in the industry. Because ladies and gentlemen, I have had my fill of entertainment in my life. But what I want to fight for is for my children to have their fill. For the next generation of gamers to have their fill. And you know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea if some games came out that I loved and my kids loved and we could play together. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask as a customer? Hell, I remember playing the first Call of Duty port to the Xbox, Call of Duty Finest Hour, with my dad. Talking with him how far he made it into the game and talking with my dad about how hard it was. Man, those were great memories. One of the greatest things about gaming is the community around it and are the memories that we get to have with it. And I love seeing these industry professionals call it out. If you're not going to give gamers what they want, then you deserve to lose your jobs. Period. End of story. Give the customers what you want. If you want my money, earn it. If you don't want my money, you don't get it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to A Drink With Crazy. I do appreciate all of you being here. Do me a favor and check out the brand new shirts that I just launched. I'm absolutely proud of them. They've been hanging up on the wall for a long time, these designs. My wife designed them. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And as always, oh, wait, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, uh, there's some videos popping up on the screen right now. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.